Hello everyone, welcome to your 59 tutorial on uh, Laravel. Now what we're going to uh, see quickly is, um, uh, before we start doing this, we need to look, take one more look at the relationship. Remember that um, in our database we have projects table, then we have um, users table, and to add projects to users, what we did was we created a table that we called project user. And that table simply contains uh, ID of the table, user ID, and project ID. So that is what we, we have contained in project user table. So this third table, uh, we need to make sure Laravel um, already handles some things for us if we name it correctly. We've named it correctly by putting the, uh, the one that comes first in the alphabet first. Uh, that is P comes before U in the uh, English alphabet. So we'll put it first and make two of them singular, right? Now let us look at the project model. If we go to the model and look at projects. So inside the project model, we'll define that projects can have many users. So I'll make this plural, S. So a project belongs to many users, you understand? And um, that's how you define a many to many relationship. So in projects, we can say a project belongs to many users, you understand? So we can go to the users table too, and also do the same thing because a user belongs to many projects. So if we go to the users um, model, we'll go to projects and say, uh, make sure it's in plural, a project belongs, a user belongs to many projects. This simply means that a user can have many projects and a, and a, and a, a user can have many projects and the project can have many users. That's simply what it means. So this is how you define a many to many relationship many to many relationship in Laravel. Now we have this definition correctly, the rest of the things will work like magic for us. So what we do is I'll close this, then I'll close this just for space. We need space in the world. So I'll delete this. So we're simply going to identify what this uh, basically does is take a project and add a user to it. That's what this method does. So uh, take a project uh add a user to it so um the reason i there's a, a reason i put this comment here so you understand it better so what we do is um we're just gonna say the project we're working with is whatever comes as request so we're gonna do when the form is submitted we're expecting the form to be submitted so we just say the request we just declare a variable for it request cool so what the project is is um if we say project find the project um, find the project that has which id the id of the project that we are working with so for us to get the id of the project we're going to go to show the blade make sure that we're secretly passing the id of the project first so for me i will control Ctrl C, Ctrl V, that duplicated this line for me. So I'm just going to make one hidden. I'm say, I will say type equal to hidden. Now this is hidden. What we're going to do is to put the value. So we say value equals. So to put the value, we will have to um, use project ID. The reason we're using project ID is that project ID is already available for us in this page. If we can scroll up, you see that we we already have project name, project description, project ID is already available. So we're gonna add project ID to um as you can see it's already available here too. So to the form we're using, who knows where we kept the form? Okay, cool. So I'm just gonna do project ID. So that when this user submits this form. Uh, email will be submitted and also the ID of the project will be submitted. You understand? So I'm going to give it a name and call it project underscore ID. So um, is, the, is this name that the request method picks up? So we're going to do a name here and say um, the name here is email. Cool. So now we have the name and email. We can now start. Uh, we can now submit this form, and it will get to our project controller, and then uh, work wonders from here. All right. So what we do next is so we're gonna do request whatever is coming from the form 
check the input fields that are coming from the form and uh, find the one that has to do with project ID okay so this project ID cool so th this project ID now we're getting the details of the project that has this project ID what we're gonna do next is to attach save the user so we can do um, user uh, but before then this is where the magic happens so if we say project we can call a function inside the project method remember that we have this function here in project uh, we have users that attaches belongs to so we can call this method and then instruct it on what to do so we go back to our code and we say users that is the method we just called we can now tell it to attach so it's going to attach something which is the user ID for us so it's going to uh, we're going to pick the user ID from the input so for us to do that for us to pick a user ID we actually have to translate the email you remember that what we're passing into the form is actually um, an email so we're going to do user find a user oops we're going to find a user that has the user that has this email then to say where um, email is equal to whatever is coming from the form as the email so for you to do this uh, make sure that you have imported the users tables as you can see we didn't import it so i'm going to do that here um, ctrl c ctrl v duplicates the line i'm going to say import the user model so the user model is now imported so we can actually do this manipulation that we're working on here where are we so we can now we can now use it here so we're saying um look for the user where the email is this so if we found the user if user if we actually found the user we can now um, go ahead and attach the user we can now say users attach uh we can, projects attach a user with the id of um this user id so cool um does it make sense to you so far let me just run over it one more time we basically um got the the form the, the whatever i submitted from the form we got it and then we extracted the the project id from it and then we went to the database to look for the project with this id now we've got it cool the next thing we did was take the email that is from the form go to the users table and look for the user with this email if we actually found this user we're going to attach um, this user to this project okay so we're going to attach this user id to this project now um there are so many ways you can do what i'm trying to do now which is basically also check if the project work if the project existed there are many ways in laravel in, fa in fact there are better ways to actually do this so what I'm trying to do is to make sure that this project actually uh, existed and this one existed. There are many other ways to uh, You can do find or fail and um, there are many functions for uh, in Laravel to do that, okay? So we're basically checking uh, did this query work and did this other query work. And then if it works, we'll just attach this user to this guy. So basically this works for us. But before we test it, I want to tell you that there's a security loophole here. Uh, there's a loophole. What if from our form, here remember that what we're doing in the code is to um in shoulder blade we have a hidden class a hidden uh input field uh, type okay input field. i'm going to delete type text from the here yeah. cool so because we already put type hidden and if it's hidden we don't need a placeholder uh, we don't need a placeholder cool so So we have a hidden field then we have the field that they can see what if some hacker decides to actually see um, explore our site here let me refresh this site um, so once we have refreshed it okay what if a hacker decides to right click here and um, inspect elements to see what is there and remember that the id for this project is one and the hacker decides to right click inspect element and um, see the form and um, go to add members 
see this form cool expand the form uh, we are pretending that we are a hacker now and now we've expanded the form the, pro the hacker is now saying that there's an input field with a project ID of value of 1. Remember that this is the value of this ID, this project. Now what this user might intend to do is to, to add themselves to another project belonging to another company or whatever. They can just put the ID of the project, a random ID. If they now submit this form, if they now submit an email here, they will be automatically added to this particular project. So, so this way they can just gain access to to a pro to any project they want. Okay, so we're going to prevent this loophole uh, by making sure uh, there are many ways we can approach this. But the first thing, uh, first basic thing we can do is to make sure that the user that is adding this email is the one that created this project. Okay, apart from that, um, we can go to more extents to make sure that this uh, security loophole is blocked. Okay, so in the um, projects folder here we're going to first of all check whether the user here is the same person that created this project so we're going to check if the the auth authentication or oh, well um first of all i want to just put get here all right so we're going to first of all make sure that if the user now we found this user we're going to compare uh we're going to first make sure that if uh if the, the authentication the user in the auth this is the currently logged in user the id of this user is the same thing as the id of the user that created this project so we can say um, the project id user id then we can proceed with the rest of the application so what we do is copy everything inside here um, like i said this is not enough uh, but you can take your time since see this is this is not a completely security project you can take your time to figure out all the other ways to block a user from entering another project okay so by just entering the project uh, user id okay great now what we have here is uh once we get this user from the project id once we get this project id we'll check whether the logged in user is the one trying to add a new user if it's a person we can now permit them to add a new user uh, like i said as an assignment you can check uh, because this way we've restricted the person the possible number of hackers to be the only, the person that created the project is it's just the only one that can be able to to add a new person now uh, to this project now we're, what we're going to do next is to check how we can prevent this person from adding themselves to another project all right, thank you very much. See you in the next video where we actually um, send some things back to the, the user page.